Hello, today I'm going to go over Formation of Hurricanes, Lecture and Prediction. So I want to first talk about how hurricanes form. Um, so let's look at this first part. Hurricanes form when warm ocean water, at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit, heats the air above it, causing the air to rise and create an area of low pressure. So we have warm water here. So this is all warm water. Tropics. So think tropical waters. Because to get it to be 80 degrees um, is pretty unusual. So you need this warm water. Warm water, it's easier for it to evaporate, which means you get a lot of warm, moist air here. Well, warm, moist air will rise. And that's because of the density difference. So that creates a low pressure system. So low pressure, that warm, moist air rises. Okay. As the warm, moist air rises, it cools and condenses into clouds, releasing latent heat that fuels the system. So as it rises up, it actually cools down, right? Because as we go up in the atmosphere, um, the first part of this atmosphere, it's going to get colder, which means that that gas, the water vapor that was in the air as gas, will start to precipitate out, or condense out, I should say, as these clouds. Okay, so we've got these big clouds forming, big thunderheads. Uh, the next thing that's going to happen is uh, this whole mass of air, all these storm clouds, thunderheads, are going to start rotating. So this is because of the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect, oh, that should be a capital E, caused by Earth's rotation gives the developing system a spin, creating a tropical disturbance that may intensify into a tropical depression as more moisture and energy are drawn in. Okay, so um, as this system is moving along across the uh, warm oceans, um, Coriolis effect, because of Earth's rotation, causes it to spin. Now, in the northern hemisphere, it's going to go uh, counterclockwise. In the southern hemisphere, it's going to go clockwise. Um, so it starts to spin around this center area, which we got right here. Uh, but as it's doing that, the water's still warm, so you're still getting these buildup of clouds, buildup of clouds. And uh, since these are um, uh, big, giant, like, uh, thunder clouds, there's going to be a lot of rain and moisture coming out of them. So we have these reaching up high into the atmosphere. The whole system starts to rotate. Uh, the storm grows larger as it absorbs more heat energy from the ocean and begins to form a distinct eye at its center, surrounded by a wall of intense thunderstorms. So this is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because of this hot water. It's the fuel. That warm water is fueling it, causing more um, hot air to rise, more hot moist air to rise up, making the system bigger and bigger. And now it's starting to spin. And then finally, at this last phase, the rising warm air and the inflow of cooler air create a self-reinforcing cycle with a spiraling inward, uh, with air spiraling inward and upward. So you see a couple of things that are happening here. You see this hot, moist air still going up, which we've seen in the last couple, but you're also going to start getting cooler air that has to come in in between these systems to take the place of this warm, moist air that's traveling up from the surface. Um, so this is, this is kind of fueling the whole thing. This, this warm, or this cool, uh, air comes in, it warms up, picks up moisture, and then that travels up through the storm system again. 
The eye of the storm is calm, that's this area right in the middle, with clear skies, while the over while the eye wall contains the most intense winds and rainfall. So this area is spinning, and in the middle of it, it's actually pretty calm. There's not a lot going on in that funnel. But all of this area around it, the eye wall, that's where you're actually getting the most intense part of the storm, um, is right around this calm circle. Okay. The storm's strength is maintained as long as it stays over warm water. So remember, this is key. If you're not over warm water, that storm system will start to die out. If you go over even warmer water, it will intensify and get bigger, but diminishes when it encounters cooler waters or land, okay? So warm water makes this bigger, Cooler water or land makes this smaller, makes it less of a storm. Now on this page, we've got an image of um, the Gulf Coast and the East Coast here, and we see some water temperatures. Uh, the hottest temperature is in red, the cooler temperatures are in dark blues. And then we've got three paths of hurricanes here. So I've got a blue path, a green path, and a purple path. Well, down here, I want you to tell me what is happening to each one of those hurricanes at the spot that they're in. So right there. Um, describe whether the hurricane's getting bigger, smaller, staying the same size, and then tell me why, because there's something different about each of those three locations for the paths of those hurricanes that could be altering the strength of that hurricane. And you're explaining that here. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much.